Thanks for the introduction. Today I'll be presenting half and half where we discovered a surprising hidden feature in Intel processors that can be used to increase significantly uh, the security, including shutting down an entire class of Spectre attacks with only about 4% of overhead. This work is a team effort by UC San Diego, Purdue University, and UT Austin. We all know that Branch prediction is super important for making modern high-performance processors uh, run smoothly and keep the pipeline busy. And the branch prediction unit accelerates performance by giving multiple predictions for each branch, like t telling whether the branch will be taken or not taken, and even where it is going to lead the program. So the branch prediction unit is designed with various structures like a uh, branch target buffer to predict the target and conditional branch predictor to predict the direction. While researchers have extensively studied the structure of the BTB, uh, the structure of the conditional branch predictor remains largely unknown. We can think of the branch predictor as a structure that can be both read from and written to. For example, when a branch gets a gets predicted, it's like performing a read operation. And when the branch is resolved, uh, it updates the branch predictor state like a write operation. So in a mistraining attack like Spectre PhD, the attacker manipulates the branch predictor state, causing the victim to get mispredicted, uh, enabling potential security breaches. However, in leakage attacks, like control flow extraction, the victim's rights to branch predictor can be exploited by the attacker to extract sensitive information. And since there is only one branch predictor per physical core, it is shared among all processes and threads running on that core, and it creates a potential vulnerability, making it susceptible to side channel attacks. For instance, a malicious entity could exploit this vulnerability to breach the isolation between user space and kernel code, between SMT threads, or even between sandbox code versus host program. To tackle this problem, we revealed for the first time a comprehensive picture of the branch predictor for all of Intel's flagship processors going back more than a decade. We're disclosing key information like their size, structure, and exact indexing functions. Based on that, we propose Half and Half, a novel software-only solution for branch predictor isolation that requires no hardware or ISA changes. OK, let me first cover a little bit background about the conditional branch predictor. Branch predictors use the history of past events to predict future events. The first type of history is local history where the prediction of a branch is based on its past occurrences. For instance, if, if a branch is biased towards the taken direction, the local predictor will predict it as taken. A simple local predictor uses the branch address to index a table which stores the predictions. On the other hand, there exists global history, which can capture correlations between different branches. For example, consider two branches where the direction of the second branch is influenced by the outcome of the first branch. If the first branch is true, the second branch is also predicted as true. Global predictors typically use a combined index of branch address and global history for making predictions. So presented here is a simplified version of the state-of-the-art conditional branch predictor known as TAGE. TAGE employs a blend of local and global prediction tables each utilizing an increasing length of the global history. So for example, this design allows table one to capture near correlations. However, table n will be able to capture far correlations. So we assume that Intel's branch predictor has a Tage-like structure in the sense of using multiple tables. And we use performance monitoring counters uh, provided by Intel processors, like number of branches, number of mispredictions, and clock cycles. And our targeted CPUs range from Ivy Breach to recent Mark architectures like Alder Lake, which is introduced just two years ago. However, for the rest of this talk, I'll present the results specifically for Skylake Mark architecture. So I'll now demonstrate a simple uh, experiment that provides an intuitive understanding of how we discovered the global history details in Intel processors. Consider an if statement 
within a for loop comprising 2,000 iterations, and the if statement branches based on a random bit, zero or one. Out of 2,000 occurrences of the if statement, the branch predictor mispredicts around 1,000 times, indicating a 50% misprediction rate. This is because the condition is based on a random, and the history is not uh, helpful here. Now assume two if statements with the same random condition. Results show that the misprediction rate for the first branch is again 50%, but it is 0% for the second branch, which suggests that the branch predictor is able to predict the second branch based on the first one. So we know that global history has a limited size, right? And by increasing the distance between these correlated branches, we can determine this size. And by adding taken dummy branches between the correlated branches, we will eventually exhaust the global history and cause misprediction to the second branch. The results shows that the global history can only store information from the last 93 taken branches. When not taken dummy branches are inserted in between instead of taken dummy branches, the results are a bit surprising. Regardless of the correlation distance, we see the, the predictor still accurately predicts the second branch. This indicates that the global history is only updated based on taken branches. We also discovered that Intel's branch predictors use a different mechanism for global history instead of global history register, or GHR, which is towards the direction of branches. It is called path history register, or PHR, which is a much less common form of global history. The PHR obtains information from branch address and target address, combines them for a taken branch, and inserts the resulting information into itself. So for example, in Skylake Mark architecture, we found that PHR is updated using six lower bits of target address and bits 19 to 4 from branch address. We also found that these bits are combined to form a 16-bit number called branch footprint, which is then used to update the PHR. So the PHR update policy is like this. When a branch is taken, PHR shifts by two, and its lower 16 bits are XORed with the 16-bit footprint. Additionally, we discovered that the 12 lower bits of branch address were used as index and or tag uh, alongside the PHR in global predictors also, 13 lower bits of the branch address were used as index in local predictor. Based on our carefully crafted and complicated experiments, we discovered that each global predictor table employs a cache-like four-way set associative structure, and we identified not only one, but three global predictor tables alongside the local predictor, each of which is four-way set associative. Also, we found that each table uses a certain portion of the PHR. So table one uses PHR 0 to 21, the second one uses 0 to 57, and so on. In the index hash function of global predictors, we found that PHR is run through a hash mechanism that reduces it to eight bits. For example, in table one, bit 21, 13, and 5 of the PHR are XORed together to determine bit 0 of the index. This folding process applies to other tables within the branch predictor as well. So here is the surprising thing in our work. Our experiments revealed that each table consists of 512 sets, indicating a need for a 9-bit index. While 8 bits, as I said before, are derived from the folded PHR, the origin of the 9th bit remains a question. After doing meticulous experiments on all PC branch address and PHR bits, we found the surprising secret thing that beside the PHR, only one bit from the branch address, bit number five, has been used as an index bit independently. And this little secret feature can be used to easily partition the branch predictor to two partitions. For example, when PC5 is one, when PC5 is 0, the branch predictor uses the first half of the prediction tables, and when PC5 is 1, it uses the second half. In newer machines, bit 5 partitions the branch predictor, while older machines use bit 4. Partitioning the branch predictor helps prevent attackers from reducing branch accuracy and eliminating side channel and poisoning attacks. And partitioning the branch predictor into two partitions is especially beneficial in scenarios involving two distrusting parties, such as user space versus kernel code 
SMT threads, or even sandbox code versus the host program. We implement the partitioning mechanism by adjusting the addresses of all conditional branches within a program by inserting enough number of NOAP instructions to get desired PC5 value. We have devised several optimizations to minimize the overhead of adding these NOAP instructions. For more information, please check out the paper. We incorporate our addressing adjustment techniques into two compilers, LVM compiler and Subal compiler. The Subal compiler especially targets WebAssembly to mitigate spectre and memory safety attacks. In the security evaluation, first of all, we run Spectre PhD proof of concept attack with and without half and half, and we found that the attack is not effective when half and half is deployed. In the other security evaluation, we have two functions. Function A considered benign, function B considered malicious. The objective of this evaluation to examine the impact of function B on the behavior of function A. Function A includes 1,024 branches, while function B has a variable number of branches. These branches have varying correlation distances, uh, therefore they use all prediction tables. So the baseline approach involves running and collecting the misprediction rate specific to function A in isolation, but the actual test involves running both functions and gradually increasing the number of branches in function B and measure the corresponding misprediction rate of function A. So we see when there is no partitioning, the misprediction rate of function A, which is benign, is heavily affected by the number of branches within function B. However, when the partitioning is enabled, misprediction rate is flat and near zero. So for the performance evaluation, we replaced Sewell compiler CBP mitigation with half and half and observed a substantial reduction in overhead. So while Suivel incurred an average execution time overhead of 59%, half and half resulted in only about 4% overhead. For the LLVM compiler, we have three configurations. Partitioning bit four for older processors, partitioning bit five for new processors, and partitioning both bits for architecture independent cases for backward compatibility. In all scenarios, the geometric mean was less than 5.4%. Thank you for joining this talk, and I'll be happy to take the questions. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for an interesting talk uh, and nice work. Um, I wanted to ask several of the um, algorithms or structures that you have uncovered are, have uh, counterparts in the uh, indirect branch prediction. And I was wondering whether you have compared and whether they are using the same structure, for example, the history registers. So yeah, for the indirect branch predictor, indirect branch predictor is also using the global history, which is, which found surprisingly, it uses some structure like the PHRV found, but the length is, uh, uh, is, is very different than what we found. For example, we found that the PHR length here for the conditional branch predict is 93. However, for example, they found that for the indirect branch bit, it's just 29 bits. But the structure seems to be, uh, in some cases, similar. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Sure, uh, thanks. Uh, thank you, thanks again.